Hi, I wanted to continue our uh, discussions of Muna. Uh, uh, it's unfortunate, it's a beautiful day. Uh, today is the Erev Shabbos, Parshas Kisisa. And um, it's, uh, although Baruch Hashem, they are expecting uh, rain, hopefully tonight, and on Shabbos, but uh, there's not been a lot of rain over here. Um, so I wanted to just uh, to uh, discuss a related topic, um, you know, in this in this Emuna series. Like I said, you know, I didn't have really a very specific uh, game plan as to how we were going to uh, proceed with this, so I guess just those topics, um, you know, so I wanted to address them. So, you know, the last uh, discussion we had, um, uh, I'm not counting that Bastunos Chavrus, uh, you session that, that was uh, in between, uh, but we, we spoke about was basically, you know, the idea, <coughs> excuse me, that, uh, you know, that Ra has to exist. Um, uh, you know, that the world can't be perfect, it can't be Shalim, uh, because that would defeat the purpose. The whole purpose of the world is to be a place uh, of avoda, uh, and if it would, uh, you know, reflect Hashem's perfection in that way, so then, you know, it would defeat, it would defeat the whole purpose. I, I want to kind of uh, address a related uh, topic in Emuna. Um, that uh, you'll see what I mean when I say related. You know, it has a, a similar, a similar theme, a similar idea as far as the the question, um, and uh, you know what to me seems like the obvious answer is concerned. Um, and I want to address the, that issue. The, you know, very big, the big issue of you know in general the, the question of uh, you know science and so on. And uh, you know, uh, how does how does the Torah deal with the age of the universe and uh, evolution and uh, uh, you know all all, of, all of these types of things? Um, now, obviously, we're not going to be in the next whatever 20 minutes, 15 minutes of this year, going to be uh, answering up all of these questions you know, in in detail, uh, you know, specific way. But I would like to uh, discuss with you or present to you, uh, you know, an approach to these types of topics, an approach, um, you know, of of how to uh, you know, how do we see this uh, this topic? So I'm I'm going to take I guess let's just take for the you know, uh, for, for the sake of the 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 topic that we're going to be talking about, but really, like I said, this applies to you know, all all sorts of different things. Um, let's just take the you know the age of the universe. So let's say you know the scientists told that the age of the universe is uh, somewhere in the ballpark of 15 billion uh, years old, at least the age of the observable universe, the, the ballpark of 15 billion. Um, and uh, you know, and obviously, the Torah says uh, not like that. The Torah you know, tells us that the, the world was created 5,774 uh, uh, years ago, and uh, you know, so that's quite a quite a big disparity of, of, of a large number of billions of, of years. Um, okay, so this is this is the this is the issue, right? The issue is that uh, there seems to be all sort all sorts of scientific data that uh, that uh, indicate that that the world the universe is a certain age, that the world is a certain age of, you know, five or six billion years, or, you know, uh, that our sun is, uh, you know, 13 billion years, you know, all, the, all these types of things. Uh, and, and, you know, there's a huge amount of, uh, of evidence that, uh, that, you know, scientists claim backs this up from all, you know, all sorts of, uh, you know, all different disciplines, right? you know, ge- geology and geography, all sorts of things. Um, so uh, you know, and and uh, you know, so, so the question is, what do we do with this? What do we what, what do we do when we have uh, you know when we have a, a question like this? And and uh, how, how are we supposed to uh, how are we supposed to? Do this? So I, I want to I want to take a step back and uh, I want to address the question in uh, in a way that the truth is I haven't really read this anywhere or seen this anywhere, um, and uh, this is just really my my own thought on the matter. And I want to make it very clear that you know, I, 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 uh, you know, there are a lot of people that, that address this question and, and deal with this question or similar questions in many different ways. And um, I, I, I'm not, you know, I'm just telling you the way that I, that I feel that it, you know, there are some people, um, let's say, you know, the, the approach that I'm not going to take, um, you know, is to say that scientists are, are completely wrong and it's all, you know, and all of these different uh, things can be. Um, you know, understood differently. Um, it's you know, uh, there there are many people and people out of respect, uh, you know, that that have that opinion. And uh, you know, I I don't you know I'm not, I'm not uh, you know co- coming out against any anything like that. But I, I want to just try to share with you a, a different way of, of looking at it. Um, that, uh, I don't know. To me, this is the this is the obvious thing. And uh, yeah, and I'll tell you where this came up recently. Somebody sent me an email. Uh, I didn't end up watching it. Uh, I just watched like a couple of minutes of uh, there was apparently a, a debate recently uh, between uh, Bill Nye, who was you know this the science popular science guy, and uh, and somebody some creationist 
uh, and they were, you know, debating, the, you know, the Bible versus science and these types of things. And uh, I don't know. So I, I just I watched a minute or two. I don't have time to really sit, you know, watch a whole thing like that. Uh, you know, how have I? Uh, but um, uh, but you know, I don't know. Just from the few minutes of of what I heard, you know, I, I would not have taken that same uh, that same angle uh, at all in trying to explain, uh, you know, how a religious person sees, uh, you know, these the scientific things. But I want to want to just uh, take this away. now again. Let, let's, we're putting this in the framework of uh, of the Ramchal in, in the Sefer Das Tfudos. We're putting this in the framework of our Torah Hashkafa that uh, you know that the world is here for a purpose. That Hashem created the universe for a purpose. Uh, that we're here uh, in order to have uh, a makom of avoda, to have a playing field where we are are, are here to fill in the lack, in the gap. Uh, you know, it's sort of like we've discussed in the past, uh, in the past couple of sessions. And, that being the case, right, it's going to have to be obvious, right, it's going to have to be, you know, to me, it's a logical progression that it, it can't be uh, that, uh, that we will be able to look in the heavens and look in the skies or, or, or the opposite, look into a cell and, and see God uh, blatantly and plainly uh, in an incontrovertible way. It can't be. Uh, for the simple reason uh, you know, that that would that would take away our bechira, the whole world is created in order to be a playing field for us to uh, choose, to be challenged, to face tests, and, you know, and to choose and to, and to have bechira. That's that's the purpose of this place that that we were in. Now, if if it would if it would wink at us and it would tell us, ha ha, it's just a joke. Uh, and we would see open miracles, right? So, like everyone says, you know, open miracles would, would take away our bechira, or at least take away bechira as we as we know it. Uh, that, you know, let, let's put it that way. Okay? But uh, you know, in other words, it, it it doesn't it doesn't make sense to me uh, um, that uh, that we would be able to look into the world and look in science and see incontrovertible. Uh, when I say incontrovertible, I mean like you know, two, two equals four, you know, proof uh, to God's existence. Because the, the whole point of this place is for us to have to struggle to find to God and 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 to believe in God, and uh, so it, it, it demands that that leap of faith. So so that, let's take that again. That that's going to be self-evident, it's obvious. In in this system that Hashem created, right? Again, uh, with a purpose. Uh, the purpose again, not to reflect. His, you know, uh, greatness uh, and perfection completely. But the purpose is to be a place for us to do avoda. So then, that place has to be a place where uh, it, it's not going to be obvious to us. It's not going to be black and white that there's a God and a Creator. There has to be an option to deny. It. That's what I'm saying. There has to be the hira. The, the world is set up in such a way, and it only makes sense, right, that it has to be set up in such a way, that there has to be the option to deny God, right? And if there's an option to deny God, that means that there has to be a story of, of how this all came about, and a very good story, a very, very plausible, uh, rational, intelligent story has to exist in order to explain how this all is. Uh, you know, otherwise it's an open miracle, right? In other words, you know, the, the creationists, the, the, you know, nowadays, you know, the, the you know, creation scientists or whatever, you know, so they try to show how, no, when you, when you look into nature and you look into the world, so, so you see the open miracle of, of creation of Hashem. Now, the truth of the matter, of course that's true. Of course, if you look at it the right way, it's all open miracles. Of course, there's, you know, worlds of things that they don't understand how these, you know, how it happens, you know, how uh, the cells know how to divide in order to create a human being, I mean, all these types of things. Of course, of course, they don't know. Of course, it's open miracles if you if you want to look at it that way. Yeah. But my point is is that there has to be a back door. There has to be a way out. By definition, no matter how incredible and beautiful and intelligent uh, any system in the scientific world is going to be, it has to be that there's a way to believe that it came about on its own. Because if not, again, if not, then we'd be staring in the face of of a, an open miracle of a of a nas nigla. That would that would deny us of our bechira, right? So what I'm saying is like this: that you know, b- by definition, this is going to be a place where there's, there's going to be a way to explain it without God. There's going to be a story. There's going to be a way to understand how it came about without God. There has to be, right? And and the more that our scientific 
knowledge advances and the more that we see the you know incredible intelligence and depth of design of the universe and the world right? so the more that science has to be able to deny that intelligence by by you know that, okay now again i i want to make a side point uh, which we, we can talk about another time now of, of course uh, for a person who's looking for it, uh, I think anyway. Uh, for a person who's looking for it, uh, so a person can see evidence of God, uh, you know, in my opinion, uh, and and uh, and evidence of, um, you know, planned intelligence, you know, all over the place. But again, but that's evidence for a person who's looking for it. Um, that, that's evidence, you know, for for a person who believes that Hashem created the world, and now I'm looking to see purpose in that creation, right? But but the world itself cannot reflect that by definition. The the world itself has to be a place that there's a story that exists. So, and I want to explain what that means. I, I don't want to get into evolution and you know, whether I, I believe evolution, don't believe evolution. You know, evolution is a, is a fact. It happens. You know, the question is, is the fact of evolution, what we know about evolution, is that enough to explain you know, the vast diversity of life and all these other things? That, that's you know, the question of evolution. Again, also, you know, so many times in these questions with you know, uh, uh, creationists, with this, all these questions get, you know, uh, semantics gets, gets in the way so much. But you know, so in other words, I, so you know, I I believe that the world has to be a place where there is a plausible story for the history of mankind that doesn't involve God, right? In other words, if it would if it would be that uh, exactly 5,774 years ago, based on every dating method, etc., all of a sudden people appear on the scene and there was never anything, you know, so that would be like a, a, a black and white proof to the Torah, that, you know, incontrovertible way of showing that, you know, the man just came on to the scene. But that's, that's not going to be the case. The world is going to be a place where there's going to be a way to look at it and man came into being without God, right? As for that story right now, with, in this case, it's the story of evolution. If you're talking about the, the universe, so it's a different story. It's not, it's not evolution. The whole, the, the whole story of, uh, you know, massive gases, uh, the, the clouds of hydrogen, uh, you know, accreting under the force of gravity and uh, forming clumps and then forming stars and then those stars collapsing on themselves in supernovas and exploding out uh, and spreading all the heavier elements around the universe and then those elements you know, creating and coalescing in clouds uh, creating ultimately you know our sun uh, the, the planet and all the elements you know and everything that makes us up okay that was just the 15 billion years in a, in a nutshell uh, you know but again you know there's a whole story uh, you know a fabulous story fantastic story uh, you know that, and, and we see if we look up into the sky we look up into, into the stars with, with telescopes, you know, we see different stages of this story evolving in other places. We see other galaxies that are in the process of, of forming, uh, you know, accretion disks, and we see other stars that are in the process of forming, and we see supernovas, you know, the stars that are exploding, and, and remnants of those, you know, we see all of these things take place, right? And therefore, you know, we put together this incredible, uh, elegant, uh, you know, 15 billion year long story, uh, how to account for the universe. Now, you know, the question, you know, is that true or is it not true? Yeah, is the world really 5,774 years old? You know, or is it really 15 billion years old? My my point is, is that there is no way that we will be able to look at the world or at the stars, right, and know the answer to that question because there's no question that it was made to look 15 billion years old. You hear what I'm saying? Let me explain this to you in a in a very simple way. Uh, let's say we would be on the scene, right? Uh, two minutes after Adam Arishon was created. Okay, let's assume. Let's assume now we're talking about special creation, the Ishmaelian, that Hashem created Adam Arishon from nothing. Yeah, and two minutes later we were on the scene. And we examined him. He was three years old. Right? So we asked him, "How old is Adam Arishon?" Right? So right, we could say he was two minutes old. Right? That would be accurate. Or you could say he was thirty, and that would also be accurate. Right? But now let's look at him at thirty years old. Right? We would have lots of evidence that pointed to the fact that he was 30, right? And now let's ask a question. Let's, let's say, you know, you know did, did Adam Arishon go through the process of puberty, let's say, right? Did he go through the process of growing from a child into an adult, right? That's a process that we see, so many, you know, we, we see it happen. We see all animals go through that process. Well, here's Adam Arishon standing in front of us at 30 years old, right? So the point is, well, we'll there'll, no, there'll be no way of knowing. There'll be no way of knowing if Hashem uh, created him spontaneously to, you know, at 30 to look like he was 30, or if Hashem did something to me. You understand what I'm saying? 
question about it that the universe was created in such a way that it was old, right? Oh, wait, sorry. Uh, yeah, you know, there, there are stars uh, that are, are millions and millions of light years away from us, right? There's a galaxy, the only galaxy that you can see with the, with the naked eye without a telescope, uh, the Andromeda galaxy. It's near the in Andromeda, um, the Andromeda uh, constellation. That, that's a galaxy that you are seeing light that is two and a half million light years away. Uh, that means that the, the photons, the light that you're seeing, have been traveling for two and a half million years. Now, pause one second. The Torah tells us that the world is only 5,700 years old. Uh, so I, I don't know. So either Hashem created those photons 5,700 years ago en route, and just created them two and a half million years along their journey, or they really were traveling for too long, and Hashem has some other way of working it out. But my point is, there's no question that the world was created to look very old. There's no question that even when it was made on the spot, Adam Arishon looked fully formed. The animals were fully formed. Right? There's no question that the, there's no way that somebody would have been able to look at the world and, and to determine the age of it. So my, my point is, it's really going to be the same thing uh, you know, when it comes to these bigger questions uh, as well. The, the, there's no way that uh, we're going to be able to you know, prove scientifically, looking at the world, you know, that the world was you know, this age or that age, because every, I, I can't, every fundamentalist religious person, I, I can't imagine any person you know, has to agree that the stars that we're looking at you know, are, are millions of light years away. By definition, that means that they were meant to look, at least, right? meant to look that they were millions of years away. Um, and and, uh, and and that that the world the universe is millions of years old in order to give us that, that time necessary for that for that light to to reach us. Um, okay, I, I, I hope I hope I'm, I'm making sense over here. I hope that you understand what I'm saying. Uh, but the again, the, idea, the idea is just I'm, I'm trying to get across here just more kind of following our theme of Emuna over here. Uh, just like we said last time, you know, there are certain things that once a person understands, you know, the system. Uh, why Hashem created the world, what the purpose is here, what are, what are we doing here, what it's all about. So you know, there, there are questions that, that really fall by the wayside, that, that you know, a person understands that you know, the system, the way Hashem set up the system, you know, it, it, is going, it has to be this way. Uh, so again, yeah, we spoke about it in terms of uh, evil, in terms of lack, and now I'm speaking about it in terms of, you know, that, that it has to be that a, a, a person can look at this world in a logical, rational way and see uh, that it came into being without God staring you in the face. It has to be that way. Now, um, I'll just finish with this. You know, like I said, I, I, I happen to believe that there are places that a person can look at over here uh, and see uh, Hashem, uh, you know, and see that there's an intelligence and a, and a creator behind it. I know I do think that there are certain things um, that, are, that really are just way beyond uh, chance and that show this, uh, you know, this intelligence. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, really, I don't want to get into that. Uh, I don't want to get into that now. Um, and uh, maybe another time. Uh, but again, the idea being that you know the world is a place for avoda. It's a place for avoda, and it, it's ca- ca- tailor made for the avoda for each person. Uh, and that means that the lack that each person exists is tailor made for them to experience and to fix. And that means again, you know, the the, the rational ways of being able to deny God uh, must exist in order to give a person that that challenge, in order to give a person that struggle to to, to believe in Hashem. Okay, the bracha that we should, uh, you know, like uh, the Navi Yeshaya says, to Enechem Marom Ru Mi Bara Ela. You know, person, when you look outside, you talk to see the stars at night, you look around at nature and you see, and like I said, you know, for a person who's looking for it, you see Hashem's love, you, you, you see Hashem's intelligence, you see, you know, the incredible way in which He made the world. Okay, um, have a good Shabbos. I'll just uh, pan around over here.